Today we look at the magic career of Stanley Roberts. After a strong high school career, Roberts attended college at Louisiana State University but was ruled academically ineligible to compete as a freshman. Prior to his sophomore season, another seven-footer, Shaquille O'Neal, also came to LSU and the two battled hard in practice, with many onlookers agreeing that Roberts got the best of most of the matchups. Shaq would later say Roberts was the only one who ever really slowed him down, saying that their games were very alike, but that Roberts could shoot and that he could not. Roberts was seen as more polished offensively and outscored O'Neal in their one season together at LSU. After his sophomore season, Roberts decided he would honour his parents' wishes to stay in college, so he didn't declare for the NBA draft, only to later be ruled academically ineligible to play again, throwing a huge wrench into Roberts' plans. He decided to leave college and play professionally in Europe for a season, where he helped Real Madrid to the finals of the Correct Cup before an overtime loss in the two-leg final. After declaring for the 1991 NBA draft, Roberts was wined and dined by teams as he did pre-draft workouts. His weight ballooned to 325 pounds and his stock dropped, eventually selected with the 23rd overall pick by Orlando. After being drafted by the Magic, General Manager Pat Williams hoped to sign Roberts early so that he could spend training camp learning the new system and plays instead of getting into shape. Unfortunately, it wasn't until mid-October that the two sides agreed on a one-year $550,000 deal. Roberts was still over 300 pounds and right away he struggled to keep up in workouts because of his lack of conditioning. Roberts played sparingly in pre-season and not at all in the Magic's opening night win over the New York Knicks. The following night, starting centre Greg Kite was unavailable due to the death of his father and Roberts was given the start. He lasted just two minutes before a frustrated coach, Matt Gukas, pulled him from the game and he did not return. Roberts averaged five minutes a game for a further four outings off the bench before he was placed on the injured list on November 18th after spraining his ankle in practice. Roberts returned to the active roster in early December, but it took another two weeks before he had worked himself into good enough shape to play meaningful minutes. After a double-double against the Clippers, Roberts started the next 12 games, averaging 8 points and 6 rebounds, but he fouled out twice and he had 5 fouls in a further 6 games. Roberts returned to a bench role in mid-January and he fouled out in just 9 minutes of play against the Knicks. After coming down with the flu, Roberts didn't see the court for a week after that, but then he settled into his role, averaging 11.5 points and 6.9 rebounds off the bench for the next 13 games. By mid-February, Gukas finally had enough confidence in Roberts to start him again, and over the next 20 games he averaged 15 points, 7.9 rebounds and 1.7 blocks while shooting over 54% from the field. At the end of March, Roberts badly sprained his ankle, causing ligament damage which ended his season. But despite only playing in 55 games, Roberts was named to the all-rookie second team and he had shown enough flashes of brilliance during the latter half of the season that he had teams fawning over his free agency situation and the Magic were desperate to keep him. When the Magic won the draft lottery, there was never any question they would select Roberts' former LSU teammate Shaquille O'Neal with the number one pick, but the question became what to do with Roberts, whose one-year contract had expired. Could the two coexist? There were rumours that Shaq didn't want Roberts on the same roster as him in the NBA, while Roberts, well aware of his value in a center-starved NBA era, was not thrilled about the idea of being a backup. Roberts travelled to Dallas and signed a contract offer with the Mavericks, adding a no-trade clause to try and prevent the Magic from matching the deal. The Magic had 15 days to match the offer or lose Roberts for nothing, so they had to scramble to get enough salary cap space and sign Shaq first before being able to exceed the cap to match Roberts' offer. The Magic accomplished the feat a few hours before the deadline, coming to terms with Shaq and then matching the Mavericks' offer for Roberts. Rather than play the two seven-footers together though, the Magic convinced Roberts to waive his no-trade clause and they sent him to the Los Angeles Clippers in a trade for draft picks. Roberts had his best season with the Clippers the following year before a string of Achilles injuries derailed his career and his chance to ever fully reach his potential. Roberts had stops in Minnesota, Houston and Philadelphia before being banned by the NBA for drug violations. Roberts played a few seasons overseas and he attempted a comeback with the Raptors in 2003, but he didn't make their final roster. In Roberts' 55-game Magic career, he averaged 10.4 points, 6.1 rebounds and 1.5 blocks per game. I hope you've enjoyed this look at the Magic career of Stanley Roberts. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and check back soon for a look at the Magic career of Chris Corciani.